Welcome to the Dimitri Letskaris Report on the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. So joining us today is Dimitri Letskaris. He's a partner with the Canadian law firm Siskins, where he heads the firm's securities class action practice. He's also a board member of the Real News Network, as always. Dimitri, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sharmini. So, Dimitri, uh, you've been following uh, what has happened since last week, June 5th. There was a, a payment to be made by Greece to the International Monetary Fund. What happened? Well, let's, uh, in the weeks leading up to the crisis, uh, an important schism uh, seemed to have developed in the creditor group uh, for Greece. And that group is comprised principally of the IMF, the ECB, and uh, the European Union. And uh, the schism uh, related to whether or not uh, the question of whether or not Greece's debt was sustainable and needed to be written down. And the IMF was taking the position uh, for some period of time, uh, and it was becoming increasingly aggressive about taking this position that Greece's debt needed to be writted, written down, because as anybody with any economic sensibility or financial sensibility knows, Greece's debt is unsustainable. Uh, however, uh, the ECB and uh, the EU were uh, opposing this position. And so on about June 1st, Angela Merkel uh, convened a meeting with uh, Christine Lagarde, uh, the managing director of the IMF, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker uh, on behalf of the uh, EC, and Mario Draghi on behalf of the ECB. She also invited President uh, Francois Hollande from France. Uh, to try to uh, formulate a unified position vis-a-vis -vis Greece. And what emerged from that was something which was characterized uh, as a final offer, a unified final offer on behalf of these three groups the, that comprise the Troika. And the IMF's demand that Greece's debt be restructured, that it be written down, and that its creditors recognize a loss on, its loans to, on their loans to Greece was dropped. Uh, the precise terms of this unified offer uh, are not clear, but what, what is clear is that the offer, uh, which from the perspective of the Greek government was an ultimatum, uh, generated a very hostile reaction. Uh, and uh, this precipitated a, uh, an op-ed by the Greek Prime Minister uh, Alexis Tsipras in Le Monde, uh, where he uh, effectively lambasted the creditors of Greece, the Troika, for taking positions that were unduly aggressive and unrealistic and not uh, sufficiently deferential to the democratic mandate of Syriza. And uh, he responded, or the Greek government responded, with their own offer. Uh, and the details that have emerged from that offer really, I think, drive home the point, the Greek offer, that uh, this government, at least the leadership of this government, is anything but radical. And the principal feature of the offer uh, revolves around the question of the primary surplus, uh, which is the, the surplus that remains after the payment of interest on Greek debt. And apparently, the Greek government has offered uh, to target a primary surplus for Greece in 2015 of 0.6% of GDP, 1.5% of GDP for 2016, 2.5% in 2017, and then from 2018 to 2022, 3.5%. And by the way, these uh, the target for 2018 to 2022 is what the Troika has itself demanded, 3.5% of GDP. This is really uh, an extraordinarily uh, deep commitment to austerity at the end of the day, because it will force the Greek government to slash spending even further in uh, an economic depression. What it should be doing is engaging in deficit spending, and uh, it should not hesitate uh, to incur a primary uh, deficit in the current circumstances. Greece is suffering from humanitarian crisis. But it's effectively acceded to the notion that even in these extraordinarily dire economic circumstances, uh, it's appropriate for the government to generate a significant primary budget surplus. So the agenda of the government at this stage, its negotiating position is anything but radically left. Uh, notwithstanding that, uh, the Troika is taking the position that the, the offer of the Greek government is not sufficient. And this appears to have, uh, it's on the verge of uh, generating a very serious rupture within Syriza. Uh, in particular, the left platform, which appears to enjoy the support of something in the range of 30 to 50 percent of uh, Syriza's MPs, uh, is extraordinarily upset uh, by the government's position. 
uh, even more upset by the demands of the Troika. And uh, it's unclear at this stage whether the government can survive much longer. And within this context, a very interesting letter appeared today in the Financial Times. It was authored by uh, 20 plus uh, leading economists from around the world, uh, as well as the former uh, Prime Minister of Italy, Massimo D'Alema, uh, in which they pleaded, explicitly pleaded with the uh, Troika to demonstrate what they termed economic sanity uh, and to relax the strictures of, uh, of the austerity program and to recognize the importance of the mandate that was given to Syriza by uh, the Greek electorate in January of this year. Unfortunately, what you're dealing with uh, is not only a political class in Europe that has become radically neoliberal, but they're heavily, heavily invested in the austerity program. Uh, it would uh, probably amount to political suicide for them at this stage to acknowledge the obvious reality that austerity was misconceived from the beginning and has uh, achieved precisely the opposite effect of what was intended, namely uh, that Greece's ability to service its debts be enhanced. What's happened is that it's... Uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio has soared under austerity. And they're also deeply invested in this bailout, which at the end of the day was not a bailout of Greece, but a bailout of European banks. And if they agree to a restructuring of Greek debt, which is inevitable, it will happen, it's just a question of when, uh, then they'll no longer be able to uh, perpetuate the illusion uh, that the creditors of Greece, the Troika, have not incurred massive losses on these loans to Greece. And they're going to have to account to the electorate of Europe for the fact that losses that ought to have been borne by Europe's banks were transferred to uh, the shoulders of European taxpayers. So what they're basically trying to do is to kick the can down the road and let some subsequent generation of politicians in EU have to bear the consequences of uh, the EU electorate waking up to the reality of what was done in 2010. And that's the situation. So there's not much hope at this stage for economic sanity on the part of the Troika, despite this plea of these leading economists and all of this is happening, unfortunately, within a background where the mainstream media, uh, which is overwhelmingly neoliberal, is uh, helping the political class of Europe uh, to obscure the truth, unfortunately. Dimitri, as always, thank you so much for your report today. Thanks for having me, Charmy. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.